All right, so this is uh, review section one. I think I mentioned it on Monday, but just in case I didn't, um, this section is technically not in your book. So your resources for this section are gonna be the notes that you're looking at now, the homework for this evening, the warm up for tomorrow. Uh, given that hopefully this stuff is review, it should be like not so difficult. Um, so hopefully that's enough, okay? If not, you can always ask questions. But we're gonna do R1 today, we're gonna do R2 tomorrow, we're gonna do 1.1 on Friday, and then you'll get a quiz on those three sections on Monday. Uh, technically, there's nothing new in those sections for you, so hopefully it should be easy, uh, but you definitely want to review it. So this is called, is called rectangular coordinates. It basically starts with probably one of the most basic things for the coordinates. This is called a coordinate plane. It's also called a Cartesian plane. It's the same thing, so your book your homework says graph these on a Cartesian plane, same thing, okay? So hopefully you remember the x-axis is our horizontal axis, vertical is your y, where they meet is called the origin. The, coordinate, the quadrants start in the top right corner and work counterclockwise. So the top right is quadrant one, quadrant two is to the left of that, three underneath, and four wraps all the way back around. So this is when you get to feel super smart, okay? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and plot these points, label them, and then list which quadrant that they lie in. All right, hopefully we were successful in labeling and plotting them. So if I asked you what quadrant A was in, you'd tell me what? Quadrant one, how about B? Quadrant two, how about C? Four, how about D? Y axis, so if it's not on in the quadrant and it's on an axis, you just give the axis, which means E would be X axis and F origin. Good. So I'll be very honest, you'll probably never see a question like that on a quiz or a test, but we do it for review, okay? So given that, like a little bit of critical thinking, <coughs> determine which quadrant satisfy, satisfies the given information. So A says that X is greater than zero and Y is less than zero. So if you think about your coordinate grid, okay, X is greater than zero to the right of your y-axis, and y is less than zero where? Underneath here, right? So we need these both to be true, which means we're talking specifically quadrant four, good. Okay, B says x times y is less than zero. So that's a product. If I took something that's an x and something that's a y, multiply them together, I get less than zero. What, is, what type of number is less than zero? Negative. negative, so what kind of product gives me the result of a negative number? A negative and a positive. One's got to be positive, one's got to be negative, right? Everybody understand that? Yes. So where does that exist? In two or, or in four, right? In two, the x is positive. Or sorry, the x is negative. In two, the x is negative, the y is positive, And in four, the x. So look, I mean, first answer says just one. Second answer is two of them. That's how your answers can go. Notice the directions say quadrant or quadrants. So it could be more than one. This is a scatter plot, so these are used a lot in standardized tests, okay? Scatter plots are just graphs of information or data, okay? And then sometimes there's a correlation. So the one thing you've got to get from this is you're going to have to create your own scatter plots, which means you need to know what goes where. Whatever column's on the left, okay, think about that's typically your X, that is what's going to go on the horizontal axis. And whatever is on the right uh, would be your vertical axis. So the data that would have driven this the X would have been the hours and the Y would have been the scores. Now standardized tests will test your knowledge about scattered plot. They're not going to ask you to graph it very often, but they will say what kind of correlation does this tell you, okay? What happens to those scores as the hours go up? Typically those scores go up, yes? That means that that's a positive correlation. So if it's got positive slope, if you think about it, okay, this has positive correlation. And it'll say like, what does that tell you? All right, so hopefully your scatter plot looks something like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. doesn't have to be exactly the same increments, okay? I went from one to five on the bottom because those were nice and easy separated numbers. I started at 76 and then went up by twos. Again, whatever you choose to do, as long as you're consistent with it, makes sense, okay? But overall, what could you tell me about the correlation of this? There's a negative correlation, okay? So look at the data. This is tests, scores, and chapters. So what does that tell you? What kind of information could you infer from that? Yeah. 
What do you think happens as these go on? The chapters get Maybe the chapters get harder. That's definitely something that we could gather from this. What else? Maybe it's senior year. And we've started the, the, the downward slope already, okay? All of those things are things that you could say about this. Anything, most of that is right. Like a wrong statement would be there's a positive correlation. Obviously, that's not happening. Or that they get easier, right? Those are not happening. What do you notice about chapter three? There's a severe dip there, okay? So something could be assumed that maybe chapter three is the hardest. Maybe chapter three happens around homecoming, okay? There's a lot of things that you can infer there. Maybe that's transfig, Antioch, where you have to take a week off and spend some time with Jesus, and then when you come back, you pay for it, okay? Um, but there's a lot of, so all of that stuff is what you would probably get questioned on standardized test. Not just graph it, because they probably won't ask you to graph it, but what could you determine from your graph, okay? All right, two really important formulas that you will from here on out be expected to know, which are distance and midpoint, okay? These are things standardized test expects you to know. You'll never get given these formulas. Distance is also the same thing as length. So if it asks you to find the length of a segment, that's the same thing. It's x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared underneath that square root. And then your midpoint, you add the two x's divided by two, add the two y's divided by two. So sometimes length is a whole number, like square root of 25, which should be five. Sometimes it's a square root that can be simplified, like square root 20, which results in a two root five. You wanna make sure you always simplify it. Sometimes it's something like square root five, which will say square root five, okay? So you won't use your calculators on these. You'll leave these as exact answers. Will distance ever be negative? From one point to another, can it ever be negative? No, I'm measuring distance. It's always going to be a positive number. Okay? And then midpoint, again, can be whole numbers, can be positive, can be negative, can be fractions, can be decimals, any of it. Okay? So I'll do A with you, and then I'll let you do B by yourself. This says find the distance and the midpoint using the given point. So if I start with A, and I start with distance, and it does not matter which one I make my x1 and my y1 and my x2 and my y2 as long as I'm consistent. So if I make this one the x1 and the y1, this could be my x2, y2. I could have flip-flopped those. I just can't make one x1 and y2. You can't mix them. So distance here would be the square root of 4 minus a negative 3, which becomes plus 3 squared. And then 2 minus 2 squared, square root of 7 squared plus zero squared, square root of seven squared, or 49, which is seven. And then midpoint, again, just add them, negative three plus four over two, two plus two over two. One half, and four over two, which is two. All right, you do be. All right, so you should have gotten square root 10, which stays as root 10. And then your midpoint can be in any three of those formats. Negative 3 halves over 7 halves, as long as it's reduced, it's fine in, in improper form. Or you can convert to mixed fraction where it would be negative 1 and 1 half and 3 and 1 half and then negative 1.5 and 3.5. Okay, I'll take any of those answers. Questions on those. So we'll start with straightforward just like that, and then you'll start to see how you'll need to use these like when we start to get into circles. The last thing in this section is the coordinate problems. So these are kind of an overlap between your geometry and your Algebra 2 skills, okay? So you're going to be asked to prove that three points form a certain kind of, of a shape or polygon. 
So if it's asking you to prove that it's a right triangle, then you'll verify it. This is all using lengths. So you'll verify that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, because that's your Pythagorean theorem, right? That says it's a right triangle. If it says to prove that something is an isosceles triangle, then you'll verify that two of the side lengths are the same. Again, using distance formula showing that two are the same. And if it says to verify that it's equilateral, then all three sides have to have the same measurement. So you'll do the distance formula for all three sides. All three sides will have the same length. Oh, she's the least. So here's an example of one of those three. Obviously, we're not going to go through all three, but you can see any of those three. So you're responsible for knowing any of them. So this one says use the coordinates A, B, and C to show that triangle A, B, C is a right triangle. So you could start by graphing those points. You don't have to, but you could start by graphing those points. So if I had drawn the coordinate plane, I could say that 6, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3 is A. And then I could say 6, 0, that's my B. And then I could say 2, 0, that's C. So what's the benefit of drawing it out ahead of time? Because it didn't say you had to. So I can identify the hypotenuse right away, the longer of the three sides, which appears to be the AC, okay? It's not always going to help, but there's also something else that happened this time that's really helpful, which is what? It was uh, parallel with the x-axis. So there's a horizontal line there and a vertical line, yes? Everybody see that? How do I figure out distance if it's horizontal or vertical? Distance I could do the distance formula or make your life really easy. Count. Count. Okay, you probably won't always get this lucky, but sometimes you will. Take advantage of it when you do. So the horizontal and the vertical ones, I could literally just count. This is one, two, three, four. That's my side length. This is one, two, three. That's three. And then all I have to do is the distance formula for one side. Probably not going to happen on your quiz, but let's just say it did. You would have just missed an opportunity if you didn't even try. Okay, so I'm going to find the length of AC, square root of two minus six. 0 minus 3, I get the square root of negative 4 squared plus negative 3 squared, 16 plus 9, square root of 25, which is 5. So that's just the length of it. Now I've got to show that this is a right triangle by proving the Pythagorean theorem, which says that 3 squared plus 4 squared should equal 5 squared, 9 plus 16 should equal 25, and it does. So if it asks you to prove that something is a right triangle, it is obviously a right triangle, okay? Just drawing a picture is not enough. Just saying because it is, is not enough. The work is how you back it. So when you're asked, when you're asked this in the homework or you're asked this on a quiz, uh, you'll have to show that work. If it was an equilateral triangle, you would have to show that all three side lengths are the same, okay? So you'd be doing the distance formula all three times unless it's horizontal or vertical. If it's isosceles, it pays to graph it because you should narrow down which two look like they're about the same length, right? And it'll save you from doing all three. Questions on anything R1? If, um, like if we just show work and we saw it's like a special right triangle, what would we have to show work for that? Like a 3690, you mean? Yeah, like this one. They're all going to be, I mean, if it's a right triangle, then a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Oh, you mean like it's a 3, 4, 5 triple? Yeah. So you, yeah, you're still proving that the a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Yes, it's a triple, so it should lead you to know what the third side should be, but more often than not, it's not going to be that way. Yeah. So you want to get in the practice of it. Questions? So when you get to tonight's homework, which is posted, you, this is the work I'm expecting to see, okay? These answers, R1 and R2, are not... In the uh, not on calc chat, I'll go over them in class with you, okay? But I am expecting to see all that work. If it says to plot it on a Cartesian plane, you can bring in a little sticky, or you can save to your photos a coordinate grid and bring it in so that it, please make it neat and so that I can follow it along. I leave you space where the questions are so that you can do the work, um, but try to make it neat enough that I can grade it. Here, that's my 